All right, you beautiful sons of bitches. Today we have our favorite black belt slayer, Chris. This time he's going against a bigger purple belt. This is not a competition round, but he told his friend to attack him as hard as he could. So let's see what happens, okay? While you guys are just chilling here watching this amazing video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and maybe even the little notification bell. We try to post as often as possible and, you know, it helps to remind everyone that we posted. Um, there was a little too much hesitation on the reaching out there. Like, um, you don't really want your hands just floating in front of you. You want to be able to go, just go A to B, grab something, and then utilize it right away. I'm just not a fan of any kind of neutral tie-up that doesn't give someone the initiative because it's just like, why are we doing these grips? What are we looking for? So he goes right into a guard pole. Okay, I, I actually don't like when people do that kind of De La Hiva on me. Honestly, you, you can't knee slice through it, but you can still pass it. Okay, so we got swept. Let's go back and show exactly why that happened. So, in this situation right here, we have a couple bad things going on, okay? He's on our collar. He is going underneath on the De La Hiva side, and we're reaching back for the ankle, okay? This part's not bad. Okay, I might grab a little higher, and I might actually kind of shift my hips backwards to do it. Okay, and then push that leg underneath my body. Here on this side, we need to actually be pushing the hook itself down all the way to the ground. Okay, um, there's a few different ways to pass this particular position. One of the ways that I like to do it is to just go straight leg drag, okay, and to walk them up over their head as I do it, kind of a Hoffa Mendez style. It might be a little awkward with the grip though, so the first thing I might do is uh, shove that foot under, strip that grip off while I'm smashing or before I smash, and then smash the fuck out of this hook over here. Ooh. Okay, that was not the time to reach for the collar. All right, you're not in any danger of getting knocked down. You're not really in any danger of getting Baron Bolo'd from the grips that he has. Uh, I would have kept that foot or that hand on his foot and just kept smashing him, okay? And this needs to happen much, much faster. The, um, the reason you get almost plotted is because you reached here and it just wasn't necessary. There was a lot more we could have done first before this happened, <laughs> before we decided to reach. So we get swept right away, okay? Instantly to a pretty decent position. You know, we've got the cross sleeve, we have De La Hiva. Ooh, that was a good catch right there. Nice catch on that. That was good reactions on your part. I like that you actually tried to go back under right there and chase his back, and this should give you the leg drag if you wish to wipe your foot out. And that could end up being a pass by itself. Okay, we're now we're in a, not a great position. We're in 50-50 single X territory. Okay, we can step out of that right now. We can step. Um, you're killing yourself by having to balance on him. That was a decent back step, though. Let's go back. Okay, this other guy is doing weird shit with that leg. The fact that it's sitting right there, it's just not really the right place for that foot to be. It should be either in a shallow hook or up on your hip. You're doing a good job controlling the far leg. I'm a little concerned about the fact that he could pull you up into X guard right now. That wouldn't be ideal. Um, but you actually time it really well, I think, because as he's kind of going and looking for X guard, you backstep and pivot around. Okay, he does get on our sleeve. But he lets go right away out of a panic, and he turns into a turtle. Okay. You get side control. You get your points. Fantastically done. Uh, right there. Let's go back. Actually, I'll let it play out, and then I'll go back. You had a good opportunity to kill him and end the match, actually. Okay, we didn't get anything right away. Let's go back. So. Right here. Okay, what you can do is you can take this arm shoot it all the way through underneath his shoulder all the way to this side grab your own sleeve put this over for the ezekiel okay and especially when you pull him back down so it's like basically you're setting up an arm triangle but you instead of taking the arm triangle you go ezekiel because the ezekiel is the old like right now is when i would do it by the way i would take that arm and punch that through this opening and go for it all right and then that guarantees not only the position itself where you're, you're just going to be stuck relative to him in a certain way um, you can get on his back with it, you can mount him with it, knee and belly, both sides with it still in, and then you can go back and keep chasing the other points while you're choking him. So it's just a great idea to, to get good at that. Um, the way you just pivoted right here to try to chase the back, not ideal. Let me go back and look at your upper body setup. So we're pretty decently attached to him. Instead of leading with your knee here, I would have liked to see you bring this knee higher and lead with the foot, because that could be a bottom hook right now. Like, the, uh, the opening is there. I think you could still get it in. You just take this this leg and peel that back and bring your bottom leg in. Close. You really want this hook before anything really gets fucky. And now you missed your opportunity. He's fighting it. Okay. 
Gotta make sure anytime the guys roll through like that, we have to be ready to leg drag, okay? To turn it into a leg drag. So whatever's going on right here, we like he's reaching through for other leg or whatever's going on. Just make sure that you're windshield wiper that leg to where it's over top of his leg. Okay, so imagine when he rolls through this way, you either back step around, so now you're in side control on this side, or you pivot with him and windshield wiper with him and you end up in side control on this side, but in a leg drag position. Okay, so that's just kind of how I approach the back. I want to make sure anytime they go crazy and do some rolling shit, I'm going to get something good out of it. Okay. You got away from the back chase um, that he was trying to do. It only got there because we made a couple of mistakes, but still, we're doing a good job so far. Um, yeah, not active enough with your legs here. So, like, he doesn't have any attachment to you, really, right here. I don't even think he was grabbing your ankle, and you're just kind of here, okay? So, um, this would have been the time for you to start opening up with passing chains, you know, Toriandos right here. If you didn't fall over, you actually could have backstepped out of that, like, kind of dragged your leg out and be in a good position. Um, the fact that you fell over, yeah, that's gonna get fucky. Alright, now we're swept. You have lasso, or you could have lasso at least. For control on the far sleeve. Um, I think you're a little bit in danger frame-wise. Frames don't look like the best. They're, they're the kind of frames right now I would probably pass you, but I don't think he's going to be good enough. Um, that was a good sweep. Let's go back. Yeah, he should be hand-fighting you right now, so it's a good job that you're hand-fighting him. He was leaning way too much. He just shouldn't have accepted that position. Keep that sleeve, by the way. That sleeve grip is money right now. Oh, fuck. Never mind. It's gone. All right. Big passivity when the guy is fumbling for your grips. Okay. Like here, that grip just absolutely didn't need to happen. If you go back and count, like, out loud how long it takes him to get him. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. It took him three full seconds to finally get that grip to where now you can't just pull out of it. And that was three seconds where you did not react at all to him grabbing at your sleeve and fumbling and doing this, okay? So you gotta get an automatic reaction going there where you're either circling your hand right away or you're uh, pulling that arm back before he gets the chance to really get that spider guard grip in because once he does, then we have to grab something back and he just gets to keep that grip. It's really hard to break when you're already in a guard. It's not worth and safe to break when you're in a guard already. Alright, he's got her ankle. You have both pants. I don't think he's gonna keep that ankle though. Like, that's the, kind of, that's the kind of grip you could just kick out of right now. You could just literally take your foot, soccer kick this way, and break that grip. And then because you have both the pants and he didn't have any grip on your sleeve, you can immediately start chaining that into leg drags and Toriandos and X-passes. Just generic outside stuff. Good job blocking that triangle right there. He did try to pull it in, and you did a good job just connecting your elbow to your shoulder. It's a little loose right now, though. Now I'm a little, nerd, a little bit worried. Don't turn away from him. Turn back into him. You just need to grab something with that get that hand so it's not free floating that would have been a great time right here you can think about that diving underhook okay so so right there if you take that other hand right here get ready to underhook it take this hand off of his knee and do the pop into the underhook you can pop potentially turn this into an e slice it's gonna be a little awkward though because of the angle that he's turned at don't you dare come down into that close guard okay all right here I'm going to show you exactly what to do to fix that, okay? The Marcelo Garcia sit-out stuff from this position doesn't need to happen, okay? So right now, what you need to do is you need to take your hand, okay? And you need to actually circle it under his hips and start to put it back onto the mat, okay? It's like you're taking your arm here. It's stuck across. I don't know if this is showing up on camera, okay? And you're going to take it under and just open it and put it on the mat around this area by his head. And if he, if he lets go of the grip... You don't have to do this. You can just turn and cover him. If he holds on, it's going to take his own shoulder that he's doing this with, and it's going to put him flat against the mat again. Okay, it's called the pile driver. And I learned it from John Thomas originally, and it's been a fantastic way for me to finish from Spider Guard and all these other times where the guys are grabbing my sleeve and trying to sit out. You can also pivot right now almost to north-south. Just go up here, and you can take that sleeve grip and turn it into a Kimura grip, and that's another good way to finish these. Um, I suspect he is actually going to get away, though. That's unfortunate. Good job going right back into another pass. There you go. Let's lock this one down. You are putting some pressure on this guy. He's getting tired. I like it. Good job. Now, are we going to advance? Okay. You have a lot of options right now. That should have been a hook. Okay. You're not putting your hooks in at the times when they're supposed to go in. You're just transitioning to letting him turtle and then trying to put the hooks in. But by that point, it's harder. The guy's defending. Okay, so right here, I'm going to start thinking about 
jumping and sliding my hook in. So I'm gonna jump and bring my right leg across to this side. And as I pivot in the air, my left foot is going to become the bottom hook. Or first it'll be the top hook, okay? It's going to hook in here, either with your heel all the way across or wherever. All right, you have a good upper body connection. You keep that upper body connection. And then as you pivot and fall backwards, you use the momentum to slide your bottom hook in, pull him across the other side, and then we'll end up with both hooks. So here, instead of coming over top of him too, you could have just pivoted on the knee. You could have brought your knee up and put that bottom hook in right there. You also could have just put this other top hook in here and then rolled him so that was the bottom hook. Okay, so we missed so many opportunities to chase the back there. Um, he did not transition to a turtle safely. Now he's in a turtle and he might be annoying to get hooks in and everything, but I don't. I just don't feel like you're playing these turtle positions correctly. You're playing them really knee heavy, like you're trying to insert your knees. I play uh, really foot heavy and when I put my, my hooks in. You know, my, my foot is the first thing that's going to insert, not my knees usually. Why did that just happen? Let's go back. L hooking his leg like this is why he keeps getting you in half guard uh, and he's able to roll through, by the way. I would not hook this in the way you're hooking it. I would have this foot on top of this that way if he tried to roll into me okay i am automatically safe okay so imagine he tries to roll away so like he take he rolls over his right shoulder and your foot's on top right here it doesn't matter because you're just you catch his hips in a leg drag you're automatically passed on that side and if he tries to roll through towards you with this leg on top like it's supposed to be you just take this foot and put it on top and now you're in side control on the other side so it's like no matter what you always get side control and you can take side control and force it back into a turtle chasing position so not great leg placement as far as i'm concerned good job using your hips there to force the pass right away i was getting a little nervous he was going to wrestle up on you actually good another thing you could have done right there okay so when he was turning into you actually let me see your legs so you try to step over to mount, that didn't work, that was fine. Um, actually, you're already kind of doing it, I don't really need to comment on it. You know, I was going to say bringing your, your knees and hips really underneath his knees and hips, so even if he turns into you, he can't get half guard anyways, you have control of his hips, but you did it anyways, so good job. Okay, that, I actually didn't think that was about to happen. I gotta go back and look at that. What? So he switches, I hate people that do this by the way, that uh, they just like attack your arm as hard as they can with f rolling fat boy momentum, because it doesn't ever tap you, but sometimes it can hurt you. Alright, um, this might have been hard to stop, and you were really disconnected from your shoulder, um, he got a lot of space to do that, um, you would have had to let your hand limp arm out, you actually, okay, you did a great job pivoting to go with this, you didn't get rolled over, but at that point we didn't get an underhook back, he was able to dig on our legs, and now we have a problem. So, let's see. You still have his leg, and you still have a front headlock position. Uh, get off your knees in this position, by the way. There you go. Now, right here, look for that underhook. Use the guillotine arm to control him. Start digging for the underhook with your left arm, and then you can start to turn him down towards the mat this way. You also, instead, if you're not going to do that... Good job catching that, by the way. Uh, you should have been snapping him down, making him post his arms and hands. That way you can kind of choose which way you're going to go around behind the guy. Okay. What did he say? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Five minutes left. That is not what you ever want to hear when you're already tired. All right, so we're in a decent position again. Um, but again, look at you're playing on your knees, trying to put your knees in as the hooks. Okay, we went for the, um, the arm Barkamore trap series. We just kind of lost it, and that's okay. That happens, you know. You're trying to force something to happen late in the round, and he's able to just kind of pull it out. No big deal. Um, but I would I would have stayed behind the guy and focused more on actually getting my hooks in. There you go. That was a good option. I want to see what's going to happen with it. Ooh, this should be a back chase. No, you didn't put the hook in as he came down. Fuck. Okay. So I really like what you did here. Okay, I actually was thinking you should go Omoplata first. And I thought you were going Omoplata when you lifted your knee up to tack. Instead, you go extremely deep but not high enough, uh, De La Hiva. That foot doesn't insert as high as I would like to see it. That should have been up all the way here, okay? And that would have caused you to have way more control on the back step stuff, but you do a good job switching to the hip here, and he fucks himself by trying to step back over, so you could you dump him into your lap right now, but you lose track of your bottom leg. This leg should be coming into the bottom hook right now. Instead, you let him land on top of it, and then you just come up and take the sweep. That should have been your bottom hook. 
So that was a mistake, even though you did a good thing. You know, you just could have gotten more out of this. Did you just get quarter guard on the other side? All right. Um, not great. Let me talk about how I prevent that because I, you know, I, you did a really aggressive step over to mount without controlling his legs. Okay, so here, that's fine. What I would have done is immediately slid this up here, pivoted to face the other way, and then retracted my left foot so that my heel was getting away from his legs, either by pinning it into his hips up here, maybe bringing it a little bit higher, then I can start using my arms to defend it. Um, I wish I wasn't hurt and I could actually go and demonstrate all of this different stuff that I want you to do instead, but uh, I'm just not quite physically at the point where I can. Okay, that's a good gift wrap. You should get a back chase out of that. There you go. Good job on that. Let's get that hook in this time, though. That's your choke arm on top. That's, good. That's all good so far. Ooh, never mind. Oh, fuck. Okay, our back control really needs some work. Let's go back. Why did that happen? First off, um, we never readjusted once we got on the back, okay? He's too low. Like, your hips are at the same level as, like, the center of his spine uh, up near his neck, whereas that should be in your solar plexus. And then we can adjust our angle and start chasing with the leg and using our heel to catch his arm and doing all that good stuff. Okay, so, like, the first thing I almost always do when I get on someone's back is fix my control of the back, unless I, like, already had it. You know, sometimes I roll through to the back and I, I trap the arm instantly, but this wouldn't have been one of those cases. So, first thing I would have done is start to, like, put the hook in itself, use my legs and my pinch to pull him up higher, adjust my angle out a little bit so that I have more room to, to kind of chase with this foot, and then I would have choked him unconscious, or let him tap, depending. Okay, we're giving up a lot of control there. You just let him uh, peel your hand off and then yeah, actually grab anything back with it. Switching to the arm bar or switching to the Kimura trap here is not a terrible idea, but you gotta, keep, you gotta turn belly down again. You gotta, you had to keep turning. You tried to do like a traditional arm bar instead of rolling belly down into the arm bar where we could have re-rolled him, all right? So that's what I would have done different right there. Like, it, sometimes you do lose these positions, but you can see you had a moment. Right here, you know you're losing it. You know he's turning into you. This, uh... Your knee line comes up, you turn belly down, your head goes towards his hips. This part of your shin actually goes on the back of his neck to control his posture, and then we play from there. You know, a standard Kimura trap, belly down armbar 101. We can uh, do a lot of different stuff to finish the armbar, maybe use the Kimura trap to chase his back. Okay. First tap wins. I like that you guys are trying. Okay, it's, it's good. It's good stuff. He's on his knees. So you should absolutely just tap him right now or sweep him. Yep. That's what I like to see. I think people being on their knees are just uh, giving everything up. No, I don't think he's going to get 50. Oh, okay. No. No, no, no. We don't fall there. We did not have to fall. Yeah, come up in that leg drag right now. Nope. Not like that. Definitely not like that. You have the opportunity right now, especially right here. Okay, this hand goes to the exact position you put your other hand. Okay, so your left hand goes to the knee line, right hand goes to the belt. You pull yourself in, you take this foot, jam it out into space, and then you take your knee and jam it in, and you come up in a leg drag, so he can't even get a guard back. So that was just what I would consider a lazy way of coming up. That was a good leg drag. It just wasn't the one I was looking for. But uh, good timing on that. Good job with that. That was good. That was clean. Good reaction. He's tired. He's so tired. Okay. I saw what I needed to see. Um, you got to work on your back chases, man. Um, there, you, you get the opportunity a lot, you know. Like, that was almost close. They, are, they all look almost close. It just looks like something you haven't ever taken the time to drill. Or if you have, like I think you're prioritizing a little bit weird where you're trying to bring your knees in instead of your actual hook itself in. Um, and I don't think it's a dexterity issue because you clearly have de pretty decent dexterity and pretty good limb movement and mechanics, okay? So like when you're constantly kind of hooking over with this top leg, you're, you're not even using it for the way that I would use that if I was going to do it. You're not like re-rolling with the guy and turning it into a barambolo when he rolls. You're just trying to turn it into standard turtles and you're giving him a lot of opportunities to reach through your legs grab something and then he can roll through into like a knee bar attempt or anything 
and that happens to you a few times and uh you do a good job dealing with it but i just really think you should have gone on his back instead of having that happen at all what else you do a good job going on the offense right away and a lot of stuff sleeve control like you're doing a good job controlling his sleeve you did a poor job um letting him control your sleeves though like there was just so much fumbling there that that guy did and there was just no reason to give that up you gotta think sleeve grips on a good jujitsu guy are terrifying you know, it's like if I let George get a sleep grip, I just have a bad time, you know. I usually don't get swept, but my fucking god, it makes it harder to do something to him. There, um, you even could have been thinking about threatening clock chokes, clock chokes and stuff like that. So I just think you're fundamentally playing this position incorrectly. Um, not, the, the emphasis just isn't in the right areas. So I'll see if I can do something about... Well, actually, I have a no-gi back control turtle... Um, video where she's just kind of me rambling from a couple years ago about turtle and how to deal with it and chase the back and no gi which was going to apply to the gi so I'll see if I can have bird put a link into that and then uh, no gi back control is actually going to help you a lot if you already have it go watch it if you don't have it I'm not going to tell you to get it but I talk a lot about there in exactly how I get my hooks in from the different positions and how I recover the back when I start to lose it how I deal with people in a turtle because you it's so integral to understand all of that just to hold someone on the back so you have all your failure models in your head and how to deal with them you know and your ratio of getting on the back is going to go up a lot uh work on your bear and bolo stuff a lot um i would i would look at some of mikey musameki's work and i learned it from watching like hafa and cobrina and uh um isaac doderlin and these other really high level bear and bolo guys the meows and just working on that helped my actual back chasing mechanics from different positions like guard passing Okay, so I think everyone should have a functional bear and bolo, even if you have zero interest in ever even being on your back. If you're a wrestler who just wants to pass the guard, you should know how to do a bear and bolo because it's back chasing 101. It applies everywhere. Okay. Other than that, though, I mean, you're clearly kind of dominating the match. Uh, I'm glad you sent me in a role with you guys are trying. I appreciate it, man. I'll have Bird edit this up and get it back to you. And remember, like always, uh, eat your Panda Express. Bye. Have a great time. Alright guys, if you've ever wondered how do I manage to pull off some of the ridiculous bullshit that I do, go ahead and check out our instructionals on bgjfanatics.com. We don't hold any information back when we make an instructional. It's everything we actually do. We cover everything from gi and no gi buzzsaw, how to wrestle your way up to victory, how to assert dominance from back control, even to what sweet nothings you should whisper while you're on their back. And don't forget we have what's probably the most successful knee slice system in the world just sitting up there for free, so you should absolutely go check that out. We also have a Patreon account called Wilty Brothers BJJ, where you can help me and Bird as we try to take over the world with our non-toxicity, alright? We currently have five tiers on offer, and those tiers offer things from uh, early access to videos, to rolling commentaries of your own, to perks in the Discord channel if you guys want to jump in. We have like 700 people in there right now. Absolutely should check it out if you just want to get more involved with me and Bird. And don't forget to check out our Instagram at AndrewWilty46 for some of those sweet, not quite YouTube friendly content. Currently I'm at about 42,000 subscribers and I think Gordon Ryan has 400,000. So uh, yeah, let's get to work on that. And lastly, don't forget to check out our affiliate channel, Pedago Submission Fighting. They offer some fucking seriously good, high quality production content, almost like the Daisy Fresh documentary you watched on Flow Grappling, okay? Professional editing, lots of heart and soul put into this. If you guys aren't watching that channel already, what the fuck are you doing with your lives? And guys, like always, don't forget to eat your fucking Panda Express.